a typical question we are being asked in the People System Store is what type of security camera do I choose? Which is quite a common one, standing on the same line with how do I select the right camera, considering that the market offers so many options now and uh, what do those characteristics mean? Wired or wireless, outdoor and indoor differences. We all can just describe it as a lot of questions you don't know answers to yet. And the goal of this video is to try to answer those questions in the full value yet most compact way possible. My name is Daniel, People Systems Store, and we begin. Subscribe to People Systems YouTube channel and get your special offer on every deal. So the best way I see how to work this out is to ask yourself a set of questions. Because this is what happens when our salesman receives a call. He asks these questions to offer a person what he actually needs. So the set of questions as follows. Number one is type of data transmission, analog or network based, what's better? Number two, the install location, outdoor and indoor, camera body type, weather conditions and use scenarios. Number three is about features, additional features and smart functions such as passive infrared sensor and software level motion detection. Wi-Fi, data transmission type in compare, battery powered cameras, infrared night vision, pan tilt zoom and pan tilt cameras, abnormal sound detection, line crossing, red gen protection, face detection and face recognition. Do you need those? We will start from the basics. Analog camera or IP Ethernet protocol network camera. And uh, generally it's about how data transmission process is happening. So for analog type, Camera is only a video capture device from which data is transmitted over a coaxial cable straight to a DVR, short of digital video recorder that processes that data and makes you able to watch it in live mode from DVR and to forward the video over network to any other network device like a computer, smartphone, and etc. Now, for the network type, the camera is both a video capture device and a processor that decodes captured footage into a digital video file and uh, also network camera is a separate network device with its own address which in some uh, let me get, makes network camera a standalone device able to record video, process it inside of itself, transmit it to other network devices and even save processed videos onto a microSD card. Well, if it uh, has a port for it, of course, and you plugged one in. And also note that normally analog cameras are, well, I don't know, like 1.5 or two half times cheaper than IP cameras. Concluding, with analog camera, it is mandatory to have a DVR in pair with it. But with network type, you need the camera only. And also the advantage of analog, let's get back to it. Uh, if you'll be viewing the video straight on DVR, there will be no delay at all, which is so common for network cameras, as it takes time to process and decode captured video into a digital file inside of the camera and then send it to you over a network. That is why network cameras are more expensive than analog ones. They are simply smarter. And also a coaxial cable length for analog cameras can reach up to 800 meters or 500 without any losses, while standard twisted pair cable uh, used in IP systems reaches up to a 100 only. Although you can use some extenders, but originally these are the numbers. A huge advantage of network type though is a lot wider range of smart functionality. And consequently, you can make something really smart only on a network-based system. The same regarding system size. Large, modern video surveillance system can be made with network type only due to limitations of analog. Also, the higher resolution analog cameras you get, the lower is frames per second recording parameter. Plus, IP cameras range can offer like a lot higher resolution and a better image on an output. And honestly,
I would go with IP. After you decided, is it an analog or network type for you? Next question to ask yourself, number two, is an installation spot. And for the most part, this is what defines your camera body type. Wait, all this you can see. This is where all the confusion happens. Outdoor, indoor, uh, bullet type, dome type, pan, tilt, zoom type, or a variety of forms and range of features offered by market, like the cube body, round, and a fluid-like camera. There is it, a battery-powered camera, home Wi-Fi ones, and uh, also characteristics. What do they all mean? Frankly speaking, only a few basic characteristics matter at this point. All video surveillance cameras are divided into outdoor and indoor. All other features are optional. Earlier it was a clear body type division. Bullet for outdoors and dome cameras mostly for indoors. Though that's a misconception, dome cameras could be outdoor too, but doesn't matter right now. The point is, the variety of forms offered is huge. But what really distinct indoor camera from an outdoor is a body protection. All other features like Wi-Fi, battery, fluid light, pen tilt or pen tilt zoom features are optional and depend only on your wishes and preferences. You have definitely heard of IP ingress protection. I mean, your phone is probably has a common for modern smartphones IP66 or 67 body protection level. Right, protection. And this parameter varies from IP00 to IP69, where first digit stands for dust tightness and uh, or intrusion protection, and second digit is responsible for water, rain, snow, and pressure resistance. And I would say that outdoor type starts at uh, IP rate 66. So that's the first parameter to look onto if you're considering to get an outdoor camera. Now the second parameter is a bit controversial. That is IK code or vandal resistance rating. This defines a power of an impact applied to cameras. The higher the number is, the bigger impact power your camera can stand, like this one. On one hand, it's optional. Many modern Wi-Fi outdoor cameras don't have this feature, like this one. And that's okay as far as your camera is installed high enough so a person with a I don't know, bat could not reach it. But on the other hand, Sometimes it's indispensable, especially in public places like subway, stores, and etc. Also, there is a question about um, plastic or metal body to choose, because the plastic ones are often cheaper. The same here. Plastic camera could be indoor or outdoor, but it definitely won't stand a hit or a, I don't know, rock thrown to it. But generally, it's okay to have plastic camera installed outdoors, but I don't know, make sure it is installed high enough and with body protection rate higher than IP66. A little word about features, smart functions and uh, optional features. So, Wi-Fi only camera for outdoor and indoors is okay option, but as mentioned earlier, during a typical weather conditions like rain, snow, strong wind and etc. on Wi-Fi type data transmission be aware of possible connection loss, interferences on video connection with cameras suddenly going on and off. So, Wi-Fi outdoor camera type is more common for areas with stable weather conditions. But Wi-Fi home cameras, um, yeah, I've got a few in my home. And also, if your camera is on the same Wi-Fi router with your other home appliance like laptops and phones, and it is recording videos continuously in 4K resolution, well, expect a good network load. And also, cameras with fluid light alarm siren built in body are great for outdoor use. They commonly have an IP and maybe IK high body protection rates, but they require a lot of power, PIR or a passive infrared sensor. Uh, used for motion detection that is able to distinct body temperature usually looks like like this one. This bulging out bulb 
or they can be on a built-in body and not bulging out like this and this. And the opposite is a softer motion detection like here, or a pixel change in image detection. And yeah, from a brief description, you could guess that a regular built-in PIR like this one is way more accurate. And it is way more accurate. And it makes camera a bit more expensive, but uh, it worth every cent, as it will reduce the amount of false alarms a lot unlike software level motion detection. Now about a battery powered cameras. Like on one hand, it makes your camera absolutely wireless in combined with uh, Wi-Fi data transmission and that is a good and modern option that will stumble into the same problems as for outdoor Wi-Fi transmission. Weather conditions and network lot. And on top, in regions with usually high or low temperature, your battery powered camera worth nothing. So, uh, yeah, remember when your phone was suddenly turning off uh, uh, in your hand in winter? Like, same here. Lithium battery is an old enemy of low temperatures combined with network load. Well, yeah. Next is a PTZ standing for pan, tilt, and zoom. And consequently, Cameras that are able to move their lens to uh, lens 0 to 90 degrees vertically and 0 to 360 degrees horizontally. Plus, they have mechanical, very focal lens that can move out and dynamically change its view angle to zoom without quality loss. And normally, cameras of this class are used in a more professional environment, well, due to high cost, complex setup, and a way more advanced tasks to complete. But they have an implementation in a consumer segment like this, PT pan tilt cameras. The same as PTZ, but lighter, same 0 to 90 degrees vertically and 0 to 360 horizontally, but normally with no zoom, 2 or 4 megapixels, quite easy setup, but pretty much nice performance. Usually they have PIR sensor and they respond to motion or an abnormal sound. In such scenario, they can adjust the lens position to track and in an, an irritant who raised an alarm. Or you can take control of it and make sure everything is alright on all 360 degrees around camera in your place. Like, I don't know, like this. Night vision, of course a day vision to outdoor and indoor again. Because from an outdoor camera, it is normal to expect an increased night view distance higher than 10, 20, 30 meters and more. And this is achieved by more powerful infrared LEDs built in camera's body, like in this camera. So that's a one more characteristic related to outdoor type to look onto when choosing a camera. Night view distance, the, mo the most common smart features are line crossing and region protection, phase detection, motion detection, abnormal sound detection, <laughs> and PTZ, and all other functions we can totally attribute to advanced. And as I have already disclosed motion, sound and PTZ, so what's left is a face detection. First things first, face detection is not a face recognition that performs capture and memorizes a unique facial features of an individual. That's a, that's a common misconception. Face detection is a software-level algorithm aimed to reduce false alarms quantity due to a specific software alg al <laughs> algorithm. Uh, it is able to distinct a human face from all other objects and species. And in pair with a PIR sensor, it makes up a great accuracy and cannot even be called expensive, quite affordable and worthy. And what's left is a line crossing and red gem protection. So usually available on even a entry-level equipment. The principle is simple. On the image from camera, you draw a line or some kind of a, let's say, rectangle to highlight it and set apart from other areas in camera sight. And we set the rule that when someone crosses a drawn line or counts in that rectangle, boom, alarm event. Or it can be just count, or it can just count them, but it's not that interesting as a first option, eh? When selecting a security camera, either analog or network, dome, turret, bullet body type, a Wi-Fi, battery powered, pen tilt, zoom, indoor and outdoor and whatever, the video surveillance appliance, there are many factors and pitfalls. 
that only professionals could have seen before. But now, the power went to people. And we often get calls like, uh, that sound like, I just want this camera. And that's it. And then, it turns out that a person needs a completely different camera for his occasion. And we get a refund. And you get a pain in the ass and wasted time. Now you know how to select a camera specifically for your needs, wishes, preferences, and your unique occasion. Uh, or you can let professionals do it, but please, don't refuse a consultation. And in the People System Store, we can help you select your perfect camera or any other video surveillance appliance. We've got, uh, got network cameras, analog, flute light, intended for night vision, and a lot else. And if you indicate that you are our subscriber, we'll make it more interesting enough for you. And if you need any help, you've got any questions or uh, descriptions of your tasks, they are always welcome in the comment section uh, below the video. And not a single one will go unanswered. Thank you for watching.